And away we go. It is the nightcap brought to you by Hail Mary Sports Bar right here on BearcatJournal.com. Go visit our good friends at Hail Mary's. They are on Cheviot, right on the main drag on Harrison Avenue in the Dora District. You can walk from bar to bar with your drinks, or you can just stay at Hail Mary's. 27-inch TVs, nine-screen video wall. There's not a bad seat in the house. They subscribe to every sports package that DirecTV offers. They can stream all the games, and Cincinnati sports will always be on the video wall. They have food trucks on the weekends and randomly throughout the week. They have a brand-new walking cooler, brand-new draft lines. And not only do they pour the coldest beer around, but they do so in 32.8-degree beer frosted glasses. Go visit our good friends at Hail Mary's. Bengals game, Bearcats game, you name it, they'll have you taken care of. $10 buckets of Coors Light when the Bearcats are playing. All right, Aaron. It was a marathon today. 70 minutes. Yeah. We we were we 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 were grinding in the content factory. Getting uh getting Scott Satterfield, Jake Golday, Brendan Soresby, uh, and then a little pause. And then we were joined by Wes Miller. We were joined by my favorite interview of 2024 with Connor Hickman, and uh also a great interview from Dan Skillings. So without further ado, because this is going to be long, Aaron, pull out your notes, take it away. Let's talk about talking. Uh, Coach Scott Satterfield opened up with talking about how K.J. Jefferson and R.J. Harvey are tough. They're, they're tough. Um, said, uh, as of right now, everything is on schedule as planned. Uh, UCF is compared to a dog in the corner. Um did say that it is a, a growing rivalry, and we know that Cincinnati is going to get UCF's best shot. Um, a question was brought up regarding UCF and the red shirting players. Coach says that's just college football these days, everyone's dealing with it, and it's not really just UCF that's that's kind of going through it. Yeah. Uh, also, talked about I didn't know there were this many people but over 25 guys on the injury list after the last game and pretty much everyone is green lit on coming back uh, including court kiner um and cam rutherford is the only question mark and he's a maybe so we'll see we might actually have everyone from the injury list back maybe uh off i'm going off what he said on track to be back i think that's the the, the key part they're they're trending. There there were guys in yellow jerseys today. Like not everybody was full hundred percent participation, but it, it, things are uh, safe to say things are a lot brighter than they seemed Saturday at mid last Saturday at midnight. He they're caught me Tuesday, with that whatever. coach speak. He caught me with that coach speak. Yeah. Look, I'm I listening. Mean, at, I'm listening at two times speed, going through seventy minutes and trying to take notes at the same time. It's yeah. Look. Sunday after the Texas Tech game, the training the training room was like a mass unit. They have made a lot of progress since then. Aaron and his staff have put in some work over the past ten days. Uh, commented that offensively we're moving the ball, he's, he's and we're scoring, but defensively this team is still figuring some things out. Uh, they are getting better at building depth in order to have that next man up mentality. I don't think it's quite where he wants it to be, um, but it, it sounds like things are definitely getting there in that regard. Uh, this team has to tackle better, especially against NFL-ready backs, which you saw one last week. You'll see one this week. You'll probably see one next week, too. Uh, yeah. Said that UCF is going to offensively scheme to get you out of place. And then they're going to try and beat you on mismatches, try and get you into a place where you got one guy trying to tackle KJ Jefferson or RJ Harvey. Um, that they're just going to option move move some things around. Motion uh, is what I w meant to say, not option, but um, they'll probably run some option too. But uh, in any case, it'll be interesting to see what what they do offensively to try and counter. A Cincinnati team that's had two weeks to prep for this game. Yeah, that part, that part, the, the chess match of this one is going to be interesting because the you know, if you look through a couple weeks, 
Um, like they looked unstoppable and now it looks like, you know, they maybe Colorado and Florida put some things on tape to, to help figure it out. Right. Uh, UCF plays very physical. Uh, Cincinnati has to get more hats to the ball, uh, in general, uh, especially in this game and, uh, tackling with one guy is always going to be hard to do. So they need more than one guy in on, on these tackles, especially when you're trying to bring down KJ Jefferson and RJ Harvey. Uh, he, he likes that what he's seeing offensively that that we're, especially Brent, Brendan Sorsby in particular, uh, they're taking what the defense gives us and they need to continue to try and not force the ball. Um, said that the rule needs to be looked at in the offseason and, and change this 10-second runoff when there's a referee error. Um, second time he's commented on, on the referees. I'm not sure if he will end up getting fined for this one, but dangerous game he's playing there. <laughs> um, and uh, said that he sees zero reason that Cincinnati would ever have any of the same issues that UNLV had due to how outstanding, that's the word he used, uh, our collective has shown to be. So he has zero concern in that regard. And now we move on to Brendan Soresby. That close losses are always tough on a team, and uh, they they hurt a little bit more. Said that on Saturday, it seems like he watched plenty of football, and it showed that anything can happen with any team any given Saturday. Uh, it, it sounded like it instilled confidence in him that one of the mailbag questions was actually asking about on the BBP. Um, he, he feels he feels good after having seen chaos. On Saturday, he proved me wrong. Uh, I said a lot of these guys don't watch college football. So he's like, "Yeah, I watched it all weekend. I just sat all day." And watched yeah, football. yep. Thanks, Brendan. Appreciate the appreciate the assist. <laughs> uh, he he said that despite everything going against uh, Cincinnati on that last drive, they still found a way to be in a good spot, and they can build on working through that adversity. Uh, so you take that negative and and try and spin it into a positive. He's getting really good at. at answering questions i'll i'll say he's getting really good at being a quarterback correct um (laughs) he was asked specifically about jamoy and and tony johnson and uh actually added that that both of them and in sterling have found ways to continue to get open and separate Uh, so he's making sure that everybody is getting their flowers that has been putting in the work um Says He's when gotta he watches, be a fun quarterback to play with. Like everybody eats. Get open, everybody. I'll throw you the ball. Yeah. And he he's able to make the checks. It's it's very different with a guy who can make the check downs. Uh he said he tries to when watching NFL football, he tries to take parts of who else but Patrick Mahomes, Josh Allen, and Joe Burrow's games. And it seems like he's got a little bit of Cowboys fan in him being from Texas. Uh so even a, a little deck too. I don't know how much help that's going to give him, but that's. that's I wanted it. to. I wanted to give one of my quits there, but I held off. I'm probably best you did. <laughs> um, he said that this offense is going to find a way to get back on track running the ball, and that uh, UCF again just a quarterback. He he's really figuring out how to answer these questions, but UCF may not have found the pressures that they want, but they are still a really good defense. Well done, kid. Well done. <laughs> no bulletin board material coming from Brendan Sorsby. Nope. That's what you want. You want a smart quarterback. Well done. Uh, Jake Golday rounds us off here. Um, he said after five games, he feels he can play more free and he feels more like himself. Look, he's had two strong games in a row now. Um, and yeah. I think I don't think there's any bullshit in, in what he's saying there. I, I think he genuinely is coming around the corner and, and he looked a lot more comfortable. Like it, yeah, we heard, I agree. Great things about him coming into the season. They didn't flash a whole lot the first couple of weeks, but you know, last against uh, Houston and Texas Tech, there were plays where you're like, okay, now I'm starting to see what the scouting report, you know, what the tape showed at his former stop. Uh, he said they are locked in on the run and being more physical has been has been the focus, uh, especially after what Taj Brooks did to them last week. 
uh, or I guess a week and a half ago now, uh, said that KJ Jefferson is big and physical and not afraid to lower his shoulder, a little different than what you typically see in a quarterback. Uh, and they're basically treating him like a running back they, as far as how they're, they're approaching this game. Um, so that Florida's defense, when they watched some of the film from the Florida UCF game, uh, the defense communicated really well against UCF. And he thinks that this defense is ready to do the same. He feels that confident in where they're at now. It must have been a good week and a half of practices because he came glowing in his review on this defense. Um, he said everyone is on the same page now on defense, and they're just fine-tuning things now. So that's that's a big, big step from where we were even two, three weeks ago. So, yeah, let, let's see it. Right. Let's see it when the when the bullets are flying for real. Even in the pressers, though, they weren't talking like that, Chad. So, I know, but I'm just saying the next step is to show us on the field. That's all. And actually, one more here because uh, I did watch it. Gavin Gerhart, uh, he was after practice. Um, he said that Texas Tech was one of the better atmospheres he's ever played in, uh, including Arkansas being his first game, I think he said. Yeah, it was um, his first game said that uh, he knew whoever was running behind him would be good, but he didn't even know Corey went out until they got out there. Didn't know Evan was gone until he was not in there. Um, and, and I guess just I can't believe that no one's communicating those things to the offensive line. <laughs> but that's, that's what he says. Uh, he said that as long as Sorsby has a little bit of time, he's going to find a way to win games and – it's it's been a little bit since you had a quarterback back there that you felt that way about. So um, emphasize they need to win coming off of a loss. Um, when he was asked specifically about UCF, um, and, and he's emphasized in the locker room that they just need to win coming off a loss, and it's not necessarily that UCF is viewed as a rivalry game. Um, and then uh, one thing I didn't know about Gavin Gearhart, he is terrified of flying. And he would honestly consider a 14-hour bus trip to flying to Florida. It, it, no, near a, anywhere near a hurricane. Certainly not near Just a hurricane. Just in general. But right. Doesn't want to fly in general. Especially, yeah. <laughs> doesn't want to fly into wind is what he said. Like, yeah. Wind. Here, buddy. That's how flying that works, bro. This is how it all works, is you're flying into wind. Have, have one of these little pills, and we'll wake you up when we land. <laughs> um, so that's that's football for you. Not bad. We're only at 13 minutes. Uh, moving on to basketball. This is where the interviews got long. Uh, Coach Wes Miller. Uh, the Ohio State exhibition is, is selling well. The lower bowl has sold out. Um, there's still some nosebleed, I guess, upper bowl, and we'll call it not nosebleed. Um, cause there, of course there's not a bad seat in the house. Um, they're wanting to make it an ongoing thing. Uh, they, they had their, their dress up event. What, what are we calling that? A banquet of sorts, uh, preseason banquet. Yeah. yeah the, the tip off banquet. Um, cause no one ever mentioned the name of it. I'm scrambling, trying to find the, the name of it. And, uh, anyway, it's the tip off uh, dinner, like whatever all right. the tip off. Yeah. Tip off uh, it's it's the second year that they've had this event. Um, Roy Williams was the guest speaker this year. That was something they added this year. They there was no guest speaker last year, from my understanding. Um, there was not. There we go. Um, Wes said that it, it's just kind of cool everybody getting to dress up and and kind of do stuff not basketball related together. Um, I can only imagine that that's probably a nice break for everyone to get to just chill while yeah. getting dressed up. Um, <laughs> Coach West said he did stop practice this week to remind everyone that John Newman is not coming back and they need someone to step up and be that guy. Oh, to be a fly on the wall during that practice. Uh, he said he has never had a freshman as diligent with how hard he worked as Jizzle James last year. And he has just looked back at who Jizzle is, where he is now, and where he was a year ago. and he has significantly improved as a player. Yeah. When asked I, about Ray, when asked about Rayvon, he said that Ray led the team in rebounding on offense and defense this summer. 
I did not expect that stat. And Wes went on to say that if you know anything about how he values stats, that that is certainly not lost on him. Um, also said that retention has a compounding effect. It doesn't just affect the guy returning, but the new guys who are coming in, whether as freshmen or as transfers, they get to see how the OGs from, from Latin, OG being original guy uh, from, from last season um, were doing it. And they get to kind of learn that way instead of just everyone kind of scrambling, trying to figure it out together. Um, unfortunately, Tyler McKinley is going to miss the entire season this year with his, his knee injury. Um, what's the what's the, how do, how are we pronouncing the French guy's name? Alvin Zella, I think is is the name. I think that's the proper way. It, is that who they're referring to when they say AZ or is AZ Aziz? No, AZ is Aziz. AZ is Aziz. All right. Well, that couldn't be confusing. I, AZ is Aziz. Okay. Well, I wasn't sure. And that's why I asked for clarification. Uh, but the, they, I just gave you the answer. I, that's what we're here for. <laughs> uh, but he, he said the, the new French fellow was thrown into the fire and is adapting really dang well. I think he said really dang well. I, I don't recall ever hearing that phrase out of Coach's mouth. Uh, but he said really dang well, I think, three times when describing the new French fellow. Howdy. Well, I don't have a, a spelling. In. Zella. Not AZ. Zella. Uh, uh, said that uh, – both CMOS and the team understand each other better this season, plus he's healthy. Um, but they, when, when I say they understand each other better, the team knows how to utilize him better at this point in time. Um, they figured it out more in that second half of the uh, conference play last year, um, and, and he's healthy. So they should continue to see uh, CMOS excel in this offense. Uh, then we get to Chad's favorite interview of the day, Connor Hickman, who said his adjustment has gone well. Uh, kind of like being a freshman again. There's more stress, but it's more exciting. He said uh, after an injury in eighth grade, he found the weight room. And going into the weight room and working out, uh, he ended up dunking. And he has taken it seriously since then. And that is what helped him earn Monster of the Summer from Mike Rayfeld. Uh, he said he is getting to watch the guys who returned. Kind of going back to Coach West talking about retention being compounding. He's getting to watch the guys who returned, and it's made things easier for him. So player making the point Coach made, and I don't even know if he was in the room when Coach West was talking or not. So, all right. He was in the back. Um, that's just a that's just a good student, right? He gets it. Um. He said that this group was a very welcoming group and uh, they have both good character and good talent. So it's not lost on him that the guys are just good people uh, that the team is recruiting. I have my eye on this um, kid for a podcasting role down the road after his UC career. He's got a he dry said, sense of humor. Like he's funny. He's got good timing. A guy, I'm a fan. He said uh, it's okay on this team to be the sixth, seventh, eighth man uh, because they, they see how much talent is on the team. Said that the Big 12 is faster, so he's going to have to learn how to – well, he's, he's been working on shooting earlier and being more crafty in the lane. Uh, he said that this backcourt, with how fast they are, how they're flyers, uh, they're going to challenge him and make him better, um, referring specifically to – uh, Jizzle and Day Day um, said that most people didn't know he could jump like that, but then he went on to say Ravon found out, and then he went on to talk about how he dunked on Ravon after saying he wasn't going to call anybody out by name, but then specifically Ravon. Uh, I yes, um, and I will say though, I was getting some uh, some updates as I was driving to Kelsey's volleyball game from the scrimmage. Uh, and apparently Ray, like Ray was mad today. Hit three, got to the rim. Like Ray was putting in work today after, uh, you know, Connor 
the six two white kid with the come over <laughs> told <laughs> told everybody dunked on Ray. <laughs> I mean, if you dunked on him, you because because Dan even talked about it, and Dan said, I'm not gonna say he bodied him, but he, he kind of bodied him. So it was I, I was he there. Said, he said he said Ray was coming across while he yeah, I was back and it was it was one of those like Ray could have made a, a life decision, a career choice, and not jumped, and it, nobody really would have said anything, but he he tried to cut him off at the pass and jumped and Connor got it and and the place got excited for a couple minutes. Uh, and, well, and, then Connor, and then Connor finished by saying that Tyler Betsy is an excellent shooter and uh, might be the funniest person that he's ever played with. I you forgot my favorite parts. One, when I asked him, he was talking about how many people he loved on this team, and I said, "Who's your least favorite?" And within one tenth of a second, he said, "Simas." And then I asked him who was next that he was going to dunk on. And he also said CMOS. So I get a feeling knowing both of them and the dry sense of humor that they have, we could get a good like back and, back and forth, forth from the two of them throughout the season, like taking little digs at each other. But I'm, I'm all for that. I love it. I love it. So good. Uh, it and then Dan Skillings took the mic for 15 minutes. And <laughs> I got what I could out of 15 minutes. Uh, he said there are high flyers all over this team. Um, I think he mentioned about, it feels like eight people by name, um, maybe more. Uh, he, he said that his mind, he was asked about the comment he made at the baseball game where he's three and out he, and he's going to the NBA. Uh, he said his mind now is not, at all what's happening after this season. His mind is only on the team and winning together. Uh, then he went on to kind of get a little philosophical where he was talking about if this team wins, if they get to, you know, Final Four, a championship game, a championship, um, that everything, everyone's going to get to eat, I, I think is the phrase that he used, uh, talking about talking about how if, if, you know, if they're able to do it all together, things are just naturally going to happen for all of them. It's one of my favorite, like, you know, and generally this is a, a stat that has some meaning, but that stat that, like, so many consecutive years, somebody that has played on the national championship team was an NBA draft pick. No shit. If you lead your team to an NCAA championship, somebody is going to draft you. If you're the best player on the best team, you're going to get drafted. Like, that's how that works. The farther you go, the more you're on the national stage, in the national spotlight, being a really good player, right? the more that you influence. It's no different than, you know, the college football playoff influencing the NFL draft. That stuff happens. That's how it works. You think, like, if let's just say hypothetically, Cincinnati loses one game in 2021, doesn't make the playoff, and plays in like, you know, they make a New Year's Six Bowl because they won the AAC, but they didn't, like, make a splash. You think nine guys are getting drafted? No chance nine guys are getting drafted. There was five or six that were going to get drafted from that team no matter what. But, like, Curtis Brooks went from nowhere to draft pick because he played on that team. Yeah. That's not a, a, a jab at Curtis Brooks. That's how this shit works. Anyhow, I digress. I would never make a jab at Curtis Brooks. No. Um, yeah, the snarl. Um, he he said he doesn't want to do things just individually. He wants to win with and for Wes. Um, and that seemed to be just the overall theme of his time up there for his 15 minutes. Get to the interesting parts. We're, we're long here. Get to the interesting part where he said him, Jizzle, we're not Seamus there yet. And We're not there. I'll, he said he turned down more money. To he stay. said he said the shot doctor tells them every day if they had it or not, and that his 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 jump shot essentially has been the most improved thing of this offseason. season. That's 
That's important, Chad. Um, he said the core players being back is huge, and that says a lot of Wes. They all could have left for more money, but they all came back for Wes, and that's including Jizzle and Simos and himself. And who, who else was the fourth one that he Aziz. named? I don't Aziz. Aziz. Um, they were all offered more money, uh, essentially. And that came through whatever avenues that you're allowed to tamper or not tamper. You're not allowed, <laughs> but they <Okay>. do. <laughs> um, he said that his uh, second year in the Big 12 <clears throat> is about the little small details, not just the, the talent on the team, uh, because paying attention to those small details in practice is going to be what helps them get to where they want to go, their goals. And then he said that they he gained a lot of respect for the conference and knows that this conference is the best conference in the entire country. He feels blessed by the opportunities that he has to play in this conference every night. Uh, he sounds like a guy who, truthfully, he's setting the stage for making a comeback as a senior. I mean, that's gonna like look if he if, if they everybody if they, if he blow, shows up and shows out and has a great junior year and he leads them deep in the tournament. It's gonna be teams that are gonna want draft Dan in the first round. He's gonna have to make a decision. Let's hope that's where this all ends up. Well, if his, if his jump shot has really improved, then one of the big missing pieces, that and not turning the ball over every game in the first minute. But I digress. Yep. Is that all you got? That's 26 minutes, 26 and a half minutes. That's Yeah, that's all I got. We did a whole other show. We did two nightcaps tonight. There you go. Talking about talking. It was a big one. Basketball's back. Football, hopefully we see them Saturday uh, in Orlando. See you next time. Wes Miller tomorrow night on the BCJ podcast. 8 o'clock Wednesday night. Brought to you by Hail Marys. Right here on BearcatJournal.com. See ya!